Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to another edition of Jerry's Take on China, and I'm Jerry. Today, I'm going to talk to you about something that I've been looking into and found to be quite strange. It surprised me when I learned what was going on. Desalination. Very interesting topic. Let's get started. One of the greatest mysteries to me has always been how we can land objects on far-off planets and send information back that help us to establish what the planet is composed of and what future use we can make of it, while at the same time we ignore a fair proportion of the problems right here on Earth. There are many predictions that the next major war won't be about territory, it won't be about religion, and it won't be about oil. It'll be about water. This has always confused me. Living in towns and cities in developed countries, we take water for granted. It comes out of the tap, we drink it. But what happens when we don't have it? Arable land turns to desert, communities are extinguished, and life in a region without water becomes pretty much extinct. Whatever or whoever it was that led you to believe created us and our Earth, whether that be your God or an evolutionary process, it gave us the solution to this dilemma and filled 70% of the Earth's surface with this most precious gift, the gift of water. But then nature did something really peculiar by putting salt in it and making it impossible to use. My confusion is not that we have water or don't, it's that we're busy looking for signs of it on other planets so we can move there at some time in our future while here on our own doorstep I've always thought we don't seem to be working very hard to develop a cost-effective or efficient way to change this massive water resource that we have into usable water. So I thought I'd look a little deeper. It's no surprise that China is emerging to take a leading role in the field, but I'm happy to say so is the USA and obviously the Middle East too. So a problem I thought was being ignored by science is actually being quietly resolved. We're just not hearing enough about it because landing on Mars, I guess, is much more sensational. To be honest, China is a bit of a late arrival and slow starter in the desalination industry, but that's really starting to change. As far back as 2013, the challenges of desalination were being considered in China and a plan was put into place that would eventually rival other great Chinese water projects, like the Yangtze River Dam. By the time the 13th five-year plan was formed in 2006, for 2016 for 2020, there was already a lot going on, but it was still energy intensive, it still had an adverse side effect of polluting local water, the byproduct is brine with a 50% salt content, and that was being pumped back into the ocean. If we scroll forward to today, the situation is very different. Despite a 2020 report written by a research intern from the US security and environmental think tank, the Wilson Center, painting a very bleak picture of high costs, loss making, large carbon footprint, because all the plants are run by coal power and the brine being tossed back into the ocean was at the cost to the local economy. Things in China are not all as bad as that seems. In fact, the article seems to have sourced its information from the same 2013 Chinese media and government releases, where it was China themselves recognizing the issue, highlighting the challenges. The reality today is quite different. The new five-year plan, 2021 to 2025, sees China approaching new levels. The country has 123 desalination plants with a capacity of 1.6 million cubic meters of water a day and increasing to 2.9 million. Yes, you heard that. 3 million tons of usable water to be produced every day. Saudi Arabia produces 22% of the world's desalinated water with 7.6 million tons a day. But it needs to, as it's one of the wealthiest but driest nations in the world. The US leads the way with an unknown amount, but probably in the region of 25% of all the world's desalinated water, particularly in California, and unsurprisingly the US military. 
which needs to desalinate 400,000 gallons a day to keep an aircraft carrier's nuclear reactor cool. That's 1,700 tons of water for each craft, and they have 72 submarines, 10 aircraft carriers. Using this technology, we can see why it's so important to them. Like everything else, I find when I look into China, it's doing some great things. In this case, I'm happy to see that not only are they doing great things cooperating with the rest of the world, the rest of the world is also cooperating with China. For change, it's not all doom and gloom. Let's look forward to a future where we can all use desalinated water and it's going to be good for the planet and good for the people. Cooperation is a much, much better way than competition. Thanks once again for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment for me down in the uh, comment box and I'll get back to you with an answer of questions or if I haven't got an answer, I'll try and find one for you. Thanks a lot. Bye.